Tamasic lost money in this company, but so did Singaporeans. This company is the latest billion dollar whale in the crypto industry to crash. I'm talking about FTX, and this is The Market Talk. Hi everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood value investor Ali here. As you know, in my channel, I like to talk about everything investing. I've been doing investing for some time. And today I'd like to bring to you the news of the latest company called FTX that on the 11th of November, I declare bankruptcy. So I'll cover three things in this video. I'll talk about what is FTX, what led to the collapse of FTX, why did people invest in FTX, and Tamasic and Singaporeans, the people that have invested money in FTX. Is there a way that they can get the money back? So let's start off by understanding what is FTX. FTX is a company that got started by this guy called Sam Bankman-Fried in 2019. Now he started it at an opportune time because that was when crypto was a little unheard of and then it suddenly caught steam. FTX is an exchange house where you can deposit your money and using your money you can trade in buying and selling of a lot of things but especially crypto. I'm getting into crypto with FTX. You in? I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. And how did FTX earn money? Well, the simple premise was that FTX will allow the trades to happen at a very, very cheap rate where they only take like two cents or less than two cents sometimes per trade. One important key concept about learning about this company called FTX is that not only was, were they an exchange house, but they had also launched their own crypto coin called FTT. And initially that crypto coin caught fire and everybody was buying the crypto coin. Even a large firm like Binance had made a huge investment in FTX but they also bought a large chunk of the crypto coins. And SBF was very smart as well. He told customers that, hey, you're already depositing your money and all. Why don't you buy some FTT coins? And if you bought FTT coins, you would get some discounts on the platform. Some, you know, things would be available for you and things like that. So the coin that he created started to grow. And in 2020, we all know crypto had a huge boom. And that is where the FTT coin also had a huge boom. Now initially, the coins were worth only like what, $0.01, which is like 10 cents, even less than 10 cents. And SBF was the majority holder of these coins. FTT reached a peak of 80 US dollar per coin once upon a time. And so FTT was one of the reasons why FTX became a billion dollar whale and why SBF himself became a billion dollar man. It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. Now, all of that would have been good. But what he started to do that was terrible for FTX was that using the assets that he generated from FTT, the money that he generated from FTT, he used that as collateral and he started to give out very risky loans. And he used to play a lot of risky bets. And he would tell people that, hey, don't worry, I'm good for the money because I have all this FTT coins. And remember, FTT coins really shot up, right, during 2020. Not only did he use his FTT coins, but later reports have shown that he even used customers' money that people had deposited into the system. He used those monies as collateral to say, hey, don't worry, I've got these millions of dollars. Uh, I can give out loans first and then later if I need to pay and all that, don't worry, I got money. As recently as August, SBF told CNBC that FTX had a billion dollars in cash to deploy at any given moment. But of course, we know that good times don't last. What happened was when the FTT token and all of crypto started crashing, SBF realized that all of these loans that he, would, he had given out became bad debts. And all of these risky bets that he was playing, you know, buying and trading of different coins and all, all of the value of the coins had started dropping. So all of his risky bets didn't really pay off. And not only that, his own FTT coin really dropped in value. So the assets which he thought he held, he no longer holds. The money that he used for the depositors suddenly found that, hey, it's, the bank is dry. What am I going to do? I declare bankruptcy! The final nail in the coffin came when the company Binance that had bought millions of dollars worth of FTT finally offloaded all of the FTT, they just sold it all out. And because the news broke out that Binance had sold their FTT coins, other people started selling their FTT coins. Not only were they selling the FTT coins, they even went to FTX to start withdrawing that money. And because the bank started getting dry, SBF realized that all of the loans and risky bets that he played, now he doesn't have money to pay them off. So eventually, SBF declared bankruptcy. Now, of course, 
If Binance is making such a drastic move, there must be some reason for it. And according to Binance's CEO, one of the things he did tweet out was that he saw some red flags in how FTX was managing its money. SBF owned another company called Alameda Research and how money was being transferred from one company to another. So this was some of the red flags that caused Binance to offload its FTT tokens and that caused a crash in the market, which eventually led to the downfall of uh, FTX. I declare bankruptcy! So now we know that FTX has crashed, the big question to ask is, why did people invest in FTX in the first place? And when I say big people, I also mean Tamase. And I also want to talk about Singaporeans. Why did they invest in FTX? So, of course, SBF himself must be a charming fellow, right? If you see any of his news articles and his interviews, you'll find that he indeed is like able to really charm his way through. He seems like a really smart person that created this genius company called FTX. You know, we've raised a few billion dollars over the course of the last, uh, last couple of years and we're a profitable business. But people would not know how well the company is being managed because it is a private company. And private companies do not have to declare many of their finances uh, or assets that they hold. And Tabasek invested over $200 million. But you must note that this only constitutes 0.09% of their total investment. So it's like 0.09% of Tabasek's portfolio is invested in FTX. So for companies like Sequoia, Entorio, Teachers Pension Plan Fund, these guys, for them, although they did spend hundreds of millions of dollars, for them, it was just a very small part of their whole investment portfolio. And they probably made the calculated risk that if this thing blows up, okay, we'll make some money. But if it dies down, never mind. We'll have to just eat it. Of course, the bad side of this whole story is that seeing Tamasic invest in FTX, many Singaporeans felt comfortable depositing their money in FTX too. And for Singaporeans, some of the money that they deposited was not 1% of their whole investment. For some of the Singaporeans, it may have been 20%, 30%, 50%, maybe even 100% of their savings. Who knows? So, the big question now. Is Tamasic able to get the money back? Are these large companies can get the money back? And more importantly, are Singaporeans able to get the money back? The short answer is no. Because FTX has declared bankruptcy. Which means it is telling the courts that my shop is closed. I'm not open for business. So, Singaporeans that have deposited money in FTX now they can just assume that that account is closed and that money is stuck there. Singaporeans have also reached out to Tamasic and MAS for help and MAS has categorically declined saying that FTX is not a Singapore registered company and MAS legally, they cannot do anything for Singaporeans to get the money back. So what is the learning lesson from here? Learn investing. And when I say investing, don't just buy and sell things. Don't just learn how to go to the stock market and press buy or press sell. Investing is about understanding the companies that you're buying into, understanding the products, how it makes money, how it generates revenue, all of that. And once you are comfortable that the business is sound, then go ahead and invest money. That is what I do. That is what value investors do. Unfortunately for Singaporeans, they felt that maybe FTX was trustworthy because of Tamasic. Maybe I could put my money in FTX and it would be safe. Unfortunately, FTX played them out. We also know that FTX is a private company. So as a private company, uh, they don't really need to open up their books to the world and show that this is how we are get generating our finances, which is very different from public companies in the stock market that are very well regulated and very openly have to discuss and share through their annual reports how they make money, where they make money, where they lost money and all of that. So one of the reasons uh, why Singaporeans may have felt betrayed is because of this lack of transparency as well. Another thing that I'd like to point out is it's not just FTX to blame, it is the whole crypto industry to blame. Uh, a very famous value investor called Warren Buffett. In fact, he warned people two years ago. He said, don't buy into crypto. And he even told a reporter once that even if you gave me all of the crypto for $25, I wouldn't buy it. Well, he may be right because now with FTX being bankrupt, $25 is more than zero. Worst part is this fall of the crypto world doesn't seem to have ended. Recently, news have come out that another company called Genesis, which also deals with crypto trading, has halted 
the withdrawal of funds. With that, I end this episode. If you are one of those people that have invested in FTX or put your money in FTX, let me know if you've got any official news from FTX. What are they saying? What do you intend to do? And if you are a general player in the crypto world, tell me, how has your journey been so far? Have you also seen losses? i really like to know. Remember to hit that like button and that subscribe button and go ahead and write your comments in this video. Thank you everybody for staying tuned.